Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about prime factorization and LCD. So we're going to start with prime factorization. Prime factorization just means that we're going to break a number down into only prime factors. All right, a prime factor just means it's one that can't be broken down anymore. So like for example, five is prime because five, you can only multiply one and five to get five. 10 wouldn't be prime because you can multiply two and five to get 10. So it can be broken down into two and five. All right, so let's look at 150. To start off, we're just gonna see what two numbers can we possibly break it down into? All right, so just looking at it, let's say we pick 15 and 10, because I see the zero at the end, so I know that it's gonna be divisible by 10, all right? Any numbers that you pick here, any factors that you pick here are fine, I just happen to choose 15 and 10. All right, now we look at these, and we say, all right, can 15 be broken down anymore? Yeah, it can be broken down into three and five. All right, can three or five be broken down anymore? No, so three and five are gonna be two of our factors at the end. All right, now let's take a look at the 10. 10 can be broken down into 2 and 5. Can 2 or 5 be broken down anymore? No. So we stop at those. For the prime factorization, your actual final answer is just going to be all of those numbers. So we have 150 and I'm just going to write the primes in order, so it's 2 times 3 times 5, and we could just put times 5 again to account for the fact there's two 5s, or we could just put 5 squared, letting us know that there was two of those 5s in there. But that right there is the prime factorization. All right, so we're done with that problem. Now, for the rest of these, there's fractions, and that just means we're gonna break it down on top, break it down on bottom, and what it's gonna allow us to do is cancel out anything that's the same, and essentially that's how we're gonna reduce fractions. All right, I'll show you at the end an easier method to reduce fractions as well, but for now we're just gonna do it by prime factorization just so we get some more practice with it. All right, so let's look at 14 over 21. So starting with 14, we can break that down into two and seven. Neither of those can be broken down anymore, so we're gonna stop with the 14. What about the 21? Well, that one can be broken down into three and seven. Again, neither of those can be broken down anymore. So, what we're gonna do is the 14 over 21 that we started with, 14 we said was two times seven, 21 we said was three times seven, and then if there's anything that's the same on both top and bottom, we can just cancel it out and we get that this is two thirds. That would be our final answer. All right, let's take a look at number three. So for number three, we have 12, which we can break into 
I'm going to say 2 and 6. If you said something like 3 and 4, it's perfectly fine. We're going to get to the same answer at the end. The 6 can be broken down again into 2 and 3. And then all of those are prime. It can't be broken down anymore. So we're done with the 12. All right, moving on to the 16. So the 16 can be broken down into, I'm going to say 4 and 4. And then 4 can be broken down into 2 and 2. we got to do that for both 4s. So we end up with just a lot of 2s. All right, so we got 12 over 16. That is going to be 2 times 2 times 3. And I am just going to go ahead and write them all out instead of putting exponents this time, just so we can easier see what we're going to cancel. 16 was 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So there's four of them. Cancel out anything that's the same on top and bottom. So we got two on top, two on bottom, and again, two on top, two on bottom. So that means two of the twos on bottom are gonna cancel out, but there are still a couple of them that are left over. So we end up with three over two times two, which is four. So three-fourths is our final answer. That's the reduced fraction. All right, so for these last two examples, we're going to do it a little bit differently. So this time, we're not going to actually worry about prime factorization. We're just going to be going ahead and reducing these fractions right away. So 15 over 35. All right, the whole idea of the prime factorization was to get to a point where we can see stuff on top that cancels out by stuff on bottom, right? So instead of going through all that work, let's just think about what we could do in order to figure those out at the beginning. So can you think of any numbers that go into both 15 and 35? Well, there's 5, because 5 goes into 15, 5 goes into 35. So instead of going through all that prime factorization stuff, we can just divide both top and bottom by 5. All right, make sure you divide both of them by that number, though. Right, if we do that, 15 divided by 5 is 3. 35 divided by 5 is 7. And then do 3 and 7 have any numbers, any factors that are in common? No. So we're actually just done. Right, and that's it. So if you can't figure out a number that goes into both top and bottom, then I do still always recommend doing prime factorization because prime factorization will get you down to those really small numbers to where you can easily just see, oh, this is the same in both, this is the same in both, and you can cancel them out. But if you can just see right away a number that goes into both of them, just divide it out and you'll be good to go. All right, so 800 divided by 600. So easy one to start off with. I can definitely see that both of these are divisible by 100. All right, so 800 divided by 100 would be 8. 600 divided by 100 is 6. All right, now remember, we're not quite done yet. We still have to see, are there any more numbers that will go into both of these? All right, so a number that will go into both 8 and 6. Yeah, sure, there's 2. 
So we can divide both of these by 2. And we're going to end up with 8 divided by 2 is 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3. There's no more numbers that will go into both 4 and 3, so we're done. All right. So make sure you know how to do prime factorization, but if you're just going to reduce it, then you can just pick numbers and go from there. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about is LCD. So LCD stands for least common denominator. What that means is it's the smallest number that both of the denominators can go into. All right? and there's a really easy process for figuring out what that is. So let's look at example six. One third and four fifteenths. So remember, this is least common denominator. So we do not care right now about that one and four. All we care about is the three and the 15 to be able to find the LCD. All right, and here's the way we're gonna find it. You take the bigger number. So in this case, the biggest number we see is the 15. All right, and then you ask, does 3 go into 15 evenly? Yes. Does 15 go into 15 e or evenly? Yeah. So if both of those numbers go into it, you're done. LCD in this case is 15 because both 3 and 15 will actually go into 15. Now it's not always going to be the first number like that, so let's move on to example 7 and I'll show you what happens when it's not the first number. So remember, we're only looking at the denominators, so we're just looking at the 6 and the 9. We're going to take the bigger one, so in this case 9, and we ask, does 6 go into 9? No, it doesn't. So since we said no, 9 is not going to be our LCD. All right, so we have to have a new number. All we're going to do to find our new number is if we started with 9, add another 9 to it. So 9 plus 9 would be 18. And so we're going to check 18. So does 6 go into 18? Yeah, 6 times 3. Does 9 go into 18? Yeah, 9 times 2. So 18 is our LCD. It's just going to be the first number in this list that we say yes, everything goes into it. All right. Next one, 3 tenths and 1 fourth. So we have 10 and 4. So 10 is the biggest one. So we start with 10. Does 10 go into 10? Yeah. Does 4 go into 10 evenly? No. So we know 10 is not the LCD. And our next number is just going to be 10 plus 10 is... 20. Then we check again. So does 10 go into 20? Yes. Does 4 go into 20? Yeah. Does 4 times 5? So since both of them go into it, 20 is our LCD. All right. One more. All right, three-fourths, five-sixths, and one-half. Again, just looking at the denominators, so we're looking at four, six, and two. 
Even though there's three numbers this time that we're dealing with, it doesn't change anything. It just means we're going to be looking through more numbers to make sure everything goes into it. So we start off with 6 because it's the biggest. Does 4 go into 6? No. So we know it's not 6. Then we do 6 plus 6 is 12. Does 4 go into 12? Yeah, three times. Does six go into 12? Yeah, two times. Does two go into 12? Yeah, six times. So 12 is our LCD. All right, now I know this one isn't on your sheet, but just to make sure that everybody is okay with this and everybody understands what is going on here, I'll give you one that doesn't just stop at the first or second one. So I'm going to call this example nine and a half and just really quickly we're going to do one eighth and one fifth. Alright, so stop the video real quick Try this one on your own. If you can get this one, you're good to go for LCDs. They really don't get any more complicated than this, just maybe bigger numbers. Maybe you have to go through a few more. But stop the video now, and I'll come back with the answer in just a second. All right, so here's your answer. It is 40. So essentially, we're just going through that same process of start with the bigger number, which is 8. 5 doesn't go into 8, so add another 8. We got 16. 5 doesn't go into 16 either, add another 8. 24. Doesn't work, so add another 8. 32. Doesn't work, so add one more 8. We get to 40, and then both 8 and 5 go into 40, so we're done. 40 is the LCD. Alright, and that is the end of this video.